Hey guys and welcome back to another video and actually today is the first match of the new Tribe Gaming roster and we have the first war coming in, it's in the big Vale Cup which is going on right now, it's a stream as well, make sure to check him out and well let's get started with the first attack, Tribe Gaming is starting this war off, we have right now a 6 man roster as you guys know which means today someone has to sit out which is Eveser, I guess he has no time, that's the reason why. Um, but this means Knowledge is playing and he's starting this war off with some dragons. So far the entry is looking really great because what he did so far was clearing out the core which um, pro provides really nice pathing and then like with this with this lightning in the core he's creating a ring base basically because the core is empty which means you have like a huge ring and then he's trying to cut this ring with using the Royal Champion with her ability and another Earthquake basically. So really nice pathing created so far, but now it's all about how quick can those dragons get into the eagle because that's the next really big um, big uh, value defense because the eagle is shooting non-stop and this is giving those dragons obviously a rough time because eagle is dealing splash damage which is... Uh, quite quite hard to handle. So let's see how this is going to go. He has no heal spells. The clan cast needs to go down, which it is, so we can get started with his heroes. So, so far this attack looks pretty good. Now it's all about if those dragons have enough hit points to get through the entire base. That's basically the, the thing which he is hoping for at this point. The eagle is shooting non-stop. The dragons are not really going for the eagle. That's quite unfortunate. The ground skeletons are delaying the things even, even more. So maybe the eagle is going to get another shot out. But let's see if that's going to happen. The eagle is loading. The eagle is shooting. So a couple of shots are most likely going to get fired into the dragons. Which is obviously not a good thing because now it's all about those dragons. Those dragons need to stay alive. The inner royal champion is dealing a ton of damage and is killing one dragon after each other. So that's not the best thing for him happening. Now a couple of dragons are going into the core. The royal champion is defending, uh, the, the warden is defending itself. And now it's getting close. Now it's getting really close into the back end. The multi inferno tower needs to go down. If this multi inferno tower goes down, the queen can reach every single building which is out there. But most likely there's going to be a giant bomb in between of the Tesla, so this is going to be super close. The archers need to stay alive from her ability because otherwise nothing is tanking for her. The dragon is dying as well, and guys, this is going to be so close. The Tesla, oh no! The queen is actually targeting the elixir storage first. And this means the first attack is going to finish off in a 98%. That's a rough start, but the same, not the worst. It's good percentage. Not triple, but it's at least good percentage. Let's take a look at the first attack of Death Inc, their opponents, and they're starting off with Super Giants and Yetis. That's some interesting arm composition right there. Um, he has some bats with them as well. That's surprising. I mean, is he actually going with the with the lock launcher from the opposite side of the tunnel? That's super risky. He is. Wow. Okay. That's that. This is some confident right there. Um. <laughs> okay. The lock launcher needs to open the entire base. Otherwise, nothing is going to the core. In addition to that, he needs some sort of funneling happening. Otherwise, those troops could get like lured away and overall could get distracted. I guess. So this is go going to be um quite close. I mean, so far the lock launcher is nicely kept alive. Nicely kept alive, which means. The lock should get the wall open to the town hall, which they are. The rage is getting placed as well, hopefully to get the town hall. And now it's all about the bats. He is starting off the bats at the top side. But the town hall is an important thing. That's the important thing right now. He's freezing the town hall, so the town hall should go down, hopefully. The queen is alive as well over there, but the town hall should go down with the yetis. And now it's all about the back end. There are so many wizard towers. He's missing the one wizard tower. Oh no, and this means this is going to be a really rough start for Death Inc. in this war. Oh my goodness. The the Royal Champ is trying her best to get some more percentage or like get the Eagle out of the way, which is obviously providing to make sure that the Queen is getting more access to percentage. But this is not looking like the like the start they wished for. That was a strange army composition to be honest, but let's see what the next attack is going to look like. The next attack is going to happen from Tribe Gaming. So um, let's see who's going to go next. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to see if they're going to have like some sort of a stable attack order, or like if it's right now just YOLO because it's the first war. So I mean, let's see how they do. 
Um, like I said, first war is obviously something new. Um, part of those guys are wondering. Clash of Clans is way bigger of a team game than, than you sometimes might think. All of the planning, all of the coordination together, like who's looking at which base and everything, and that you're not like taking care of each other's, like that you're not stealing each other's bases when there are already plans and things like that. It needs some time, and since this is the first match basically for them, let's see how good of an how this is going to be. We have Kronos coming in with the second attack for Tribe, and he is using some super witches. This is looking so far quite ni uh, quite nicely. He took care from Multi Inferno Tower, which is kind of strange considering that he's using super witches, but I guess he is only going for pathing at this time. So this means he needs to get started soon. He's deploying his um his queen. He's using the witches to lure over, over the warden, which is done nicely. And now it's all about the queen is not backtracking to this gold storage. The gold storage is in reach for the queen from the outside, but if she's actually going there, that would be a huge, like a really bad thing. But it seems like the queen is not going to go there. She is not getting targeted by the eagle. The, that's the super witches. He did a nice funnel in the beginning with the bowlers. That was a great idea. King and Pekka are funneling each other into the compartment at the bottom side, which should push the super witches into the core. Obviously, it takes some time because there are so many like skeleton traps. Now the clan castle is coming out with another witch. He has no poison. He has no poison with him, which is like the normal case with super witches. But at the same time, it takes some time. It takes some time, especially because he's bringing the double jump spell, which means he's only bringing one rage. And this is slowing super witches so, like it's slowing super witches down so badly. Now it's all about the backhand. If the scatter shot can go down, those witches which he had in the clan castle can deal a ton of damage and can stay alive for quite a nice amount of time. The queen somehow went into this long compartment and like into this ring compartment, but at the same time we have the super witches staying alive. One super witch is getting completely fried by the single fermentor, tower, but at the same time we have three more super witches staying alive. And that's the key, the royal champion itself staying alive as well, and this should be an easy peasy three star I guess. And he has like 50 seconds left. The Royal Chain ability is getting used as well. There is not too much splash left for the witches. Especially considering that the Royal Champion is still alive. So this is going to be the first three star in this match. The first three star for Tribe. That's looking good. Nicely done by Kronos. And now it's all about seeing what Death Inc can bring to the table. If they're going to three star. And if they're going to make this match close. This is going to be, a, this is going to be an intense match. Let's see, let's see. I mean, the first attack of Death Inc kind of looked a bit shaky, but let's go in with the second. The next attack is going to be Witches, Golems, and Super Wizards. Okay, that's, I mean, quite un uncommon, I would say, after the nerfs. A lot of people are, like, still using the Super Blimp, which means, like, the, the Super Wizards and the, the Blimp, but at the same time, uh, like, Golems with the Super Wizards are not that common anymore, but maybe the Witches are, to, like, are there to, like, help the super wizards with dealing all of the damage. Um, so far it looks kind of interesting. He actually used the lightnings for the back end scatter apparently, which is kind of interesting. Now one war break into the scatter compartment on the right side. And now the the blimp just to get the town hall. That's my guess at least. He's having one rage. He needs to use this rage most likely for the town hall, depending on the clan castle. Yep, he's using the rage for the for the town hall. This means there are no rages for the entire golem and super wizard and witch push basically. But at the same time, you need to remember that those golems and the heroes and witches and everything are quite tanky and dealing a quite nice amount of damage. So you never know if this works. Like this is the this is the unique thing about the strategy. You think it's already lost and then maybe it comes back. So I do not want to overreact, but at this moment I feel like the attack is n is this attack looking great? Not sure. Royal Champion already got used. So the Royal Champion is about to die really soon. Um, the last Expo is going down. That's a really nice thing though. There is a lot of splash damage on the backhand with those Wizard Towers. Especially the Wizard Tower on the outside. And then the cannon is targeting this one Witch as well. So there are not too many Witches left. But at the same time, we have the Queen. We have the Queen ability left. And we have the Warden. So there are a lot of tools left to get this base down. Um, especially because there, like, there is no really big threat to his queen at this point. So this should be actually a three star. This should be actually a three star. I mean, the queen is alive, the warden's alive. There's nothing left alive which can actually threaten the queen. At the same time, she can reach everything because of the open walls. 
And this means this is the first three star for death ink as well, right? I mean, we can, we obviously should wait for the time. There could be always strange things happening, but I I pretty much I think this is going to be three star. The super wizard is coming in. He's reaching the elephants at the same time. He's not getting targeted by any defenses, which means it's obviously a couple of seconds safe, which is nice. Now the super wizard is going to die, but the queen is alive. Her ability is left. This is going to be a three star. It was pretty close. We have to say that it was pretty close. A lot of like pretty much all of the troops died out, um, but. Still, a 3-star is a 3-star, that's everything which counts. Queen ability is getting used right now, and this means it's going to tie up the, th uh, the match again. We have the same amount of stars. Tribe Gaming is still leading with the percentage though, because of the like percentage difference in the first attack. Well, let's see. Next attack is coming in, Dex from Exorcist, and he's really, really good with this Queen Charge Hybrid normally, um, because it's always up there in Legends, so let's see what he's going to do. He's starting off with a queen, uh, with the funnel, trying to charge into the single front tower, but wait, that's super risky of an entry. The queen is not going for the cannon, right? Wait a second. That was a strange sort of... That was a strange place to start with the queen. Um, that, not sure. I mean, he's quite lucky. He's quite lucky that the defender is having a cannon in the second row in the core. Otherwise, this would have been way more annoying. Maybe he can save this. It's all about now the scatter. Oh, the next warbreak is going wrong as well. This is not looking as planned at all. Let's... Oh my goodness. Okay. He somehow needs to save his queen with taking care of the scatter, I guess. Um, otherwise, the queen is 100% dead. The healers are actually staying on this queen? What? I mean, good for him, but I'm just surprised because in my legend attacks, even if my queen is already dying, screaming and everything, and the king is full HP, my healers would still switch to the king. I mean, what the hell is happening? He's freezing the, the heroes and the scatter, but to be honest, this won't help. Like, the king is going to die against the enemy, Roy, uh, against the enemy, what is the name? The headhunters, that was the name. Enemy headhunters and enemy heroes, now he's somehow trying to save this attack with the hybrid into the town hall. The pathing isn't the best, to be honest. The pathing isn't the best. The queen died as well. Oh my goodness, this is not looking this is not looking good. Now he somehow needs to first off get the two star because the pathing into the town hall is not great at all. Um those bitter huts might help. Like just imagine those bitter huts would be walls. That would be really bad. But now it could be still wait a second, the town is active. Is something going to the town hall? Where is the Oh my god, oh my goodness, the queen is attacking the hybrid, it's attacking the miners, and the miners are still going for the town hall. This attack was, um, I don't know how to say that, but it was quite lucky on, on a couple of levels. Those healers not switching, the miners going to the town hall even though the queen hit. That could have been easier once or so. Great adaptations, I guess, from Exorcist. Nice save, he's still collecting percentages, and for his queen going that wrong, Still above 70%, 75%, I guess he's even getting 80% at this point. That's quite impressive. Really nice save by Exorcist, you have to say that. But, uh, well, the plan, the plan was a big question mark in my opinion. Like, yes, the Queen Charge at 9 o'clock would be great, but at the same time, the funneling, not sure. Either way, 80% it is, it seems, for Exorcist, which means this is another chance for Death Inc. to come back and get the triples in. So we have the next attack in, which is going to be yetis, and it's going to be super wizards. Let's see. Um, we have we have the warden walk on the left side. We're going... Wait, is he going to go again from the entire opposite side of the town hall? I mean, this time, this time he is bringing... This time he's bringing not a locked launcher, he's bringing a blimp. So it's way safer, obviously, than the locked launcher. Um, doing it with like a like a funnel with at the top side with a couple of super wizards and the yeti which is looking great and now it's all about when is he entering is he going for the for the town hall dive with the blimp or is he saying the blimp through his warden ability that those are the kind of the two main options i guess he's waiting right now for the elephants to go down this means he should go in now um play some yetis to lure over the warden nicely done and now it's all about the super wizards super wizards are getting placed in a nice off angle that's really important i see so many players are dropping their tanks which is like golems which are like yetis pekka whatever and place their super wizards right in behind because this means the scatter shot is killing them before they can even enter the base 
He had a nice off angle, so nicely done over there, keeping his super wizards alive. Rage, a ton of rages, because this time he only had to use the earthquake and a jump. But this is still looking really good for the attacker. Um, tunnel is going down, and the yetis and the super wizards are just swarming the base. There are so many troops, and they're just going through the base like nothing. That is so crazy. What an overpowering attack this is. Um, Queen is still alive. Royal Shamanist has still ability left. Guys, I think this is such a crushing 3-star. The healers are even still alive at the bottom side. Healing the yetis, healing the king. This is such a crushing 3-star. The queen ability has to be used. He, she's, taking out, she's taking out the last couple of defenses on the bottom side. But the royal champion is coming over as well. But that's already too late. The archtower is going down. Royal champion still has her ability left. She needs to, he needs to wait for the cannon to go down. Because this means the royal champion shield is going to hit the inferno tower as well. That will be... Oh my goodness. The warden, the warden was helping, the warden was clearing out the cannon, the royal champion now can easily take care of the fern tower, and this is the second 3 star in this match, and this is coming, or like the second 3 star for death inc in this match. Nice attack actually, that was, that was quite impressive, like how quick those yetis cleared the entire core, and now it's up to, up to tribe to come back, because they're right now 0, no, 1 to 2 behind in triples. And this means Nebrax needs to come in. He's the he's the Lalo guy. Um, he's doing really great with that. I have a couple of lags right now. I'm sorry. I don't know what exactly is going on. I guess something with the uh, air server, but it should be like should be fixed in a couple of seconds. Um, so like at half of the attack, it should be gone. So do not worry about that. We still watch the entire of uh, the entire attack. So let's see what exactly is going to. Happen. He's luring out some witches. Nice yet, uh, nice uh, safety blim to make sure the tunnel's going down. Nicely done. The clan castle is getting lured over. Poison is dropped. So far, so great. The couple of legs, just ignore them. Like they're going to disappear in a second again. Um, so King is walking to the outside of the can. Queen in behind, and this is looking quite nice of an entry. I guess he's going to try to get the enemy scatter and the enemy queen. This is kind of like the goal which he's going for. Let's see if he gets out of this. First black man is triggered by the nice Coco baby dragon. <laughs> Nicely done over there. And now the queen is trying to do her best to somehow reach the enemy queen. The king is trying as well, but the king is going to die. The headhunter is coming in as well, but the headhunter is just way too late. The queen ability needs, like the queen needs her ability, and this means the enemy queen. I don't think the queen is going to go down. The ground expo. Oh my goodness. Okay, the queen is going to survive out of this. The enemy queen is going to survive out of this. This is not the best thing which could happen to him, obviously. Whew, rough start. Okay, now let's see how good and how clean of a Lalo this is going to be. Hey, spell early. He needs to somehow get the enemy queen down. Freezing the queen, freezing the sweeper, which is nice. Headhunter in as well. The headhunter should clear easily the enemy queen, hopefully, especially with all of the minions and lava pups. And now it's going to go into the back. And we have still, we have still the enemy royal champion still alive. He needs to combine the warden ability and his last headhunter to get the royal champion down. That's like really key at this point um, to have this combination. He has one more freeze and now he needs to be really, really slow with his spells and with the warden ability. He needs to take his time to make sure that all of this is going to work as planned. The loons are going to take a weird pathing because he has not too many loons left to kind of like redirect them. But this is going to go in. Oh my goodness. He's going to freeze early because he needs that warden ability. The headhunter actually went to the king. Now he needs to wait with the with the warden. Wait a second. The warden is getting used, which means the ground expo is getting, going to kill off the headhunter. This is going to be so close. The time is going to be close as well. 24 seconds left. The minions are trying their best. He's placing archers everywhere. And now the Royal Champ is even killing the enemy, enemy like the attacking Warden. This is not looking good for Nebrax, but his loons are trying to save the entire attack. There are so many loons left. The Royal Champion is just getting one shot. And somehow he saved this. What an attack. Oh my god, that was crazy. Such a good save once again after having the save already from uh, from Exorcist, but this one is going to result in a three star. So let's take a look if Jeth Inc can answer once again. And this time they're going in with hybrid. They so far choose uh, chose a lot of yetis, a lot of witch attacks. Now it's all about this entry over here. Let's see. He's starting off. No, no, that's such a classic mistake. He's placing a yeti to get the air defense. So far, so good. But if you want to have the air defense, do not place 
and I repeat this, do not place a wizard to the Yeti because this means you speed the clear speed of the Yeti with, when it comes into the trash buildings, which means the Yeti is going to the next gold storage and the gold storage is not, is not the target you want to go for because this means the Yeti mines are going to the to the, t the possible Tesla or to the wizard tower. So really bad entry at this point with the wizard, like the wizard messing up the entire Yeti and this air defense is shooting this healers like nonstop. Now he's starting to freeze and sending in a couple of hawk riders. But guys, I think this is just way too late. There are so many, so many uh, healers which already died. And I think at this point he has, now he has one healer left. And guys, trust me. I'm like, this is from experience. This won't work. <laughs> like, all of those expos, just on this one queen with one healer, <laughs> that will never work. So, quite unfortunate start. Now he needs to just get the second star in. Same basically as Exorcist. Need to use his spells. Uh, Warden still has a ability left, the Royal Champion. Let's see where he's placing that. I mean, he's right now saving it, which is quite smart. I guess he's going to place the Royal Champion. Never mind. He's going to place the Royal Champion into the Hound. I thought he would be going somewhere else. But wait a second. What happened to the, to the hybrid? All of his troops died. He has not used a single heal spell. What is going on? Oh my goodness. Uh, this is going to be horrible of an... Wait a second. What happened? The, I mean, the attack looked easy to get a two-star, but this was... This was rough. This is actually one star. Oh my god. Exorcist with the OP defense. Okay, I would have not that this, thought this would happen, especially after... I mean, the start already was not the best with the healers, okay? The Yeti not getting the defense down was quite obvious with placing the wizard. And then the hybrid. Not sure. I have I have no clue what was going on over there. Um, That's, that's quite surprising. Um, Well... I don't know. Uh, let's get to the next attack, I guess. Um, oof. Not sure. <laughs> uh, Royal Champion. Okay. Next attack is going to happen for Maxi. Um, and he is going on this base, which I think... I'm pretty sure this is actually a tribe base. This is a base which uh, Eve check ran, ran like a, a month or like... I think he ran this two months and this base is like three months old or something like that. So... It's quite an old base. Um, let's see if Maxi knows that. We all know like Maxi has not the best uh, base memory, but at the same time, he's easily a really good attacker. So let's see if he's going to get this. Um, he's starting off with the king and already got a lot of value with the royal champion. Queen is now going in. That's perfect. The king is even going in. This is looking so good. Um, where is he starting the Lalo from? That's the question. He's going to start with the Lalo on the left side. Okay. But he's trying, oh, uh, I think he did the, he's, like, one thing which Maxi always tries to do, he's trying to, s like, save his queen, basically. Uh, but I feel like the ladder was, maybe started a little bit too early, because what this now did is basically, he's, he, he had, wow, the warden ability was so early. I don't know why he used that warden ability. And now there are no more loons left, because so many loons from the first group died, so many loons of the first group died from uh, to the scatter. This means there were no loons left to follow. This means the warden had to stick to the queen, which was quite unfortunate. He had the blimp to save the tunnel. That's uh, that's something um, good, obviously, for him to save the two-star. But this is not going to result in a three-star at all. The queen is going to get some more percentages, but this is not going to be enough for a three-star. But I think because of the one-star from Death Inc., I think it's going to be still enough to get this win in. That's everything which counts in the end i guess but still this is not looking like a three star nope the queen is going to get killed by this expo yep and well that's that's not a three star nice try to maxi nice try um that's a weird war to be honest like so many strange attacks on both sides well let's see what the last attack is going to look like from death inc because they have the last attack in this match um i'm pretty sure they cannot win this anymore because of the percentage uh, they already basically lost in the first couple of attacks. But still, let's try to take a look at the last attack, which is going to happen from Death Inc. And let's see what strategies they're going to use. They're using, one more time, Queen Shorts Hybrid. I have to be honest. I mean, I have to be honest. I was not a huge fan of the last uh, hybrid attack of Death Inc. It, was, it kind of seemed like 
Not really well planned. Not sure. Um, let's see what this one is going to be. Because he is bringing a jump. And still two wall breakers. This is going to... He has some crazy plans with this queen. Is he going to wall break into the single throne tower and jump into the core or something? Maybe he's going to jump into the scatter compartment. That could be a thing as well. He's placing a yeti over there. Okay, wait. I'm just so confused right now. What is he trying to do? Like... Um... I mean, the jump is leading, and now the Yeti blimp? I'm just so confused right now. I'm so confused. The queen is now jumping into the base. Um, isn't the queen jumping at some point into the inferno? No. He's starting off with the hybrid already. Wait, what? This is such a weird plan. This is such a weird plan. So what he did so far, he's just charged the town hall. He has two war breakers left, which I have no clue where he's going to place them. And... Now the hybrid just threw the core into the base without really pathing and the clan cast is alive. This is some weird plan over there. The king is getting obviously a ton of percentages, but I mean, I'm using hybrid on my own as well. And I, have, I don't think this has a chance to three star because the queen is basically stuck now in this compartment um, over there. She's not providing a ton of help. And at the same time, the jump already took so much of the spell power of this attack. And he has two warbreakers left, which he's trying to place somewhere. So this is not going to end up in a 3 shot. I'm pretty sure about that. Especially because the hound just popped and there's nothing left to get the, uh, get the lava pups. But, uh, well, what a weird war. What a weird war. Still, it was the first match of the new tribe gaming roster. I hope that uh, we're going to see many more of those. And obviously, I will cover all of them. Uh, so if you want to follow the tribe gaming, uh, the tribe gaming journey, make sure to follow this uh, this channel. We're going to take a look at a ton of those matches. And well, I guess this was the last attack, and this means this is going to be the result: twelve to eleven in the end for tribe. Not the best match, but still, I mean, it shows that not every person, not every player is perfect, and there's some mistakes happening at some point. So still, GG's to both clans, GG's to both teams. Thank you so much for, for letting me stream to uh, Big Vale. Like I said, check him out. He's a streamer as well on Twitch. And well, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow for the next one. Until then, see ya and bye-bye.